welcome back uh, in our previous uh, video we went through the proc reg outputs in sas uh, for uh, ols regression with one dependent variable and one independent variable so we're going to use that and uh, extend the concept of regression where we have one uh, dependent variable and multiple independent variables so how would that look so for example let's try to draw it out uh, let's say that we have uh, one independent variable, one dependent variable, which is our uh, uh, y variable, which we want to predict, and I have a variable which is x, which is one of my independent variables, and let's say I have another variable z. So I have observations y1, x1, z1, y2, x2, z2, y3, x3, z3, all the way till n observations. So I want to build a function y such that it is a function of not only x but it's a function of x and z and if we apply ols uh, regression to this particular function most specifically we want to build a linear function such that y is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus c so over here what's different from uh, regression with one dependent one independent variables is that instead of uh, building a line in uh, in a two dimensional space we are now simply going to extend that line into three dimensions and all the mathematics and the statistics actually remain the same so i will have what we have over here is uh, instead of one uh, uh, instead of a two dimensional space we are now going to be working into let's say hypothetically three dimensions so you can imagine a three dimensional space and this is the corner of any particular uh, 3d space so if you can actually visualize the corner of your room as well so this could be the origin so we have x axis over here we have z axis over here and we have y axis over here and the the scatter diagram or any of these observations so any point in this uh, uh, even when i translate this uh, uh, data set of three variables into a a scatter diagram that scatter plot is actually plotted into the three dimensional space so each dot or each observation has uh, so xi, yi, and zi has three coordinates. So if I want to calculate the distance between two observations uh, using the Cartesian formula, what I will do is I'll do x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square. So that came out a very little uh, squiggly, but you get the point. So the point which I wanted to make, a, make across is that working with three variables is uh, working with multiple or three variables is just the same as uh, doing a regression between two variables. Instead of one independent variable, I have two independent variables, x and z, or I can call them x1 and x2. Now, instead of having uh, a, a constant, uh, instead of having a slope for against one variable, m1, now we need to estimate two slopes. One is the slope against x1, the other is the slope against x2. The constant remains the same. The constant is the... Uh, is the y intercept at the point at which both the independent variables are set to zero so if i set x as zero and z as zero or x1 or x2 as zero the line will intercept the y axis at a certain uh, point and that distance of uh, the intercept from the origin on the y uh, uh, the y vector that becomes my constant and that remains the same so i can extend the equation of a line from two dimensional space to a three dimensional space and I can actually go ahead into four or five dimensions as well. So instead of just x1 and x2, I can actually say y is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus all the way till mn xn for n number of uh, independent variables plus my constant. Now it may become a little uh, difficult to visualize more than two independent variables because we move from three to four dimensionals all the way till n dimensions. But as mentioned in my first lecture, the n-dimensional space uh, is nothing but a mathematical and logical extension of uh, a two-dimension or a three-dimension space. Just because you cannot visualize it does not mean it doesn't exist. And, it, uh, and we can apply the same Cartesian geometry on uh, the n-dimensional space as well. So extending the concept of n-dimensional space onto uh, linear regression, uh, more specifically ordinary least squares regression, 
we go from simple linear regression which has uh, one dependent variable and one independent variable to multiple linear regression which has still got one dependent variable but multiple independent variables. So the equation takes the form yi is equal to beta naught which is our uh, uh, intercept or the constant plus uh, beta 1 xi plus beta 2 xi2 and uh, all the way till uh, uh, the n number of uh, variables that we have and uh, we need to then estimate a slope against each variable separately. So we have uh, n number of slopes also that we need to uh, estimate. And this estimation can be done using OLS or it can be done using another technique known as maximum likelihood as well. So we are not going to go into how maximum likelihood works. Uh, uh, that's out of the scope of our training exercise. But uh, what we will cover is that the assumptions of uh, multiple linear regression remain the same. So all the assumptions that we covered, so we covered three assumptions of uh, uh, linear regression. One is the linear relationship between independent variable and dependent variable. So this moves up that the linear relationship should be established between all independent variables and the dependent variable. So any independent variable that we bring into the model should have a linear relationship with the dependent variable. So that becomes the assumption. The assumption around the residuals remain the same. So my uh, uh, my uh, uh, regression formula remains the same. So y is equal to m1 x1 plus constant plus the error term. So the error term or the residual, all the assumptions regarding the residual also remain the same. So <coughs> the residuals need to have a mean of 0. They should be normally distributed around the mean. And they should have constant variance or homoscedasticity. So they should be IID. And we covered what does IID and homoscedasticity mean in our previous lectures. So moving on to uh, how do we actually go about building a multiple linear regression model. So I'm going to work with the previous example itself. So we had uh, built a model where we were saying math is a function of science. And we were able to explain 39% of the variation in uh, science as if, uh, th sorry, 39% of the variation in maths using only science as an independent variable. So I'm going to introduce another variable into this model and say that uh, model math equal to science plus one more independent variable. So if I look at the syntax, the syntax doesn't change. So the syntax remains the same. Model dv equal to iv1, space iv2 all the way till all the independent variables. So I just need to put in a space and enter another variable. So I'm going to say model math equal to science plus, uh, let's identify another variable. Let's put in read over here. So I'm going to say read. And let's have a look at the output and see if there is anything that changes. So this is uh, using only one. So here, here's the other output. I didn't open it. Yeah, so this is the output. You will see that uh, the uh, the sum of squared errors for uh, the uh, the regression has changed. So the total uh, squared error term or the total variance in the dependent variable is still the same. But explained variance and the error variance have changed over here. And if you look at the R square, the R square in our previous model was about 39%. So it's jumped up to 51%. So what we've done is by including another variable, we are able to better explain the variance in our independent in our dependent variable. So it would seem that uh, by including one more variable, my model has gotten better. And if I look at the p-value of the ANOVA, it's coming as 0 0.001 again. So the regression is significant. The, the null hypothesis of the ANOVA changes slightly. Earlier, if we had only one independent variable, uh, the null hypothesis was that that the independent variable does not have a linear relationship with the dependent variable. Alternative would be that the, the independent variable has a linear relationship. So when we have multiple linear relationships, sorry, multiple independent variables, the null hypothesis becomes that none of the independent variables has a significant linear relationship with the dependent variable. Alternative becomes at least one has a significant relationship. So the alternative is that at least one of either science or read has a significant relationship. But we will not be able to figure out which variable has a significant relationship just by looking at this alone. So ANOVA only tells us either none of the variables has a significant relationship 
or and the alternative is that at least one has so we won't know which one until unless we look at the t test for individual variables itself so i know that the uh, the uh, model regression uh, sum of squares is now explaining more of the variance and the r square is simply the model uh, variance explained divided by the total variance in the dependent variable which is coming out to be about 51% i'll see that the root mean square error in the previous exercise if i look at the the previous exercise so we haven't stored it here but the root mean square error for the previous exercise was about 7 something now it's come down to 6 and a half and the coefficient of variation has come down from 13 and a half to 12 and a half so looking at all the parameters the r square has gone up the average error has come down the coefficient of variation or the percentage variation around the actual uh, uh, predicted value has also come down so my model has become better and if i look at the variables the intercept is now 14.3 and uh, science intercept is 0.33 read intercept is 0.44 and if i look at the significance of these uh, these uh, intercept uh, sorry the estimates the parameter estimate so i also need to check whether this parameter estimate is significant or not so i look at the t value and the p value so again the the null and alternative for each of these parameter estimates remain the same that being that they are testing whether the estimate is significantly different from zero or not so the null is that the parameter estimate for science is actually zero and this variable has no relationship with math by no relationship i mean no linear relationship alternative it has a relationship so we uh, we run the t test the t value comes out to be 5.53 p value comes out to be low it is in the rejection region so we reject the hypothesis and we conclude that science has got a, li a linear relationship with math similarly for read the p value is low null has to go therefore read also has got a significant uh, linear relationship so what happens if i start increasing the number of variables so science and read i've already put in let me put in write as well and let's have a look at our r square so let me put in write here so the r square now is coming out to be 51% so let's put in one more variable and see whether it goes up or not and let's open the the latest model i see that uh, the r square has jumped up from uh, 51 to 55% so the model has become slightly better and the new variable which i added in is also coming up as significant So let me put in one more variable. Let's put in social studies as well. And let's check the output again. And I see for social studies as well the uh, if I put in social studies the r square is remaining the same so the r square has not changed much the p value for anova tells me that at least one variable is significant and if i look at all these variables separately i see that the estimate for social studies has come out to be 0.08 and the p value is 0.1386 and that's interesting what it's telling me is that the t value or the, the t test for this has come up as insignificant i e the estimate for social studies is not significant i e social studies does not have a linear relationship with math where in this particular regression problem i e social studies is not a significant variable i don't need it in my model when i have these variable science read and write there is nothing that the social studies is bringing to the table it's not a significant variable at all and the p value is high so that's the reason why the r square has not increased so if you observe with social studies in the model my r square is 0.55 and if i remove social studies because the variable is insignificant the r square should not change too much i look at the r square uh, in the latest uh, so currently it's 0.55 so let's open up the latest output and it's still 0.55 so it's gone uh, so practically no change and i'd see that social studies has been removed so automatically a variable which is not significant for my regression model the p value will tell me whether that variable should be in the model or not and i can uh, remove it so typical values of alpha that we compare in a regression model can be at 5% level or even at 10% level 
it rarely is uh, more than that as you saw itself that at p value of 0.13 the variable it was insignificant so even if uh, i keep alpha higher it will not uh, make my model any better so this was uh, building a simple linear regression uh, so simple multiple linear regression model where we moved on from uh, just uh, one variable to more than one uh, independent variable so let's talk about the second uh, assumption uh, which comes into play when we move from simple linear regression to multiple linear regression and that's the collinearity assumption so the collinearity assumption is that uh, the independent variables are actually independent of each other so what does this mean we're going to talk about collinearity in our next lecture now and that's a that's a very strong assumption that we need to take care of when we are working with multiple variables